FreshBooks is uh, one of the founding members of the Small Business Web. Um, and we really owe that to Sunir, because uh, when he was with us, he and a, a, a ragtag bunch of uh, folks from uh, MailChimp and BatchBook uh, got the ball rolling sort of seven years ago now, something of that order. Um, anyway, so uh, very excited, proud, proud, proud founding member of the Small Business Web, but I really want to thank for Sunir for making this all happen and creating uh, what is a remarkable event for SMB, because there isn't really one like this where all the folks who are serving uh, this market can get together. So th thanks, Sneer. Um, okay, uh, so with that, Sneer knows me fairly well. I know Sneer fairly well. He asked me, hey, why don't you come and talk about 10-year overnight success story? Because um, I literally spent three and a half years in my parents' basement uh, building this business the day we left, Sunir joined us and we were like seven people or something like that way, way back when. Uh, so very, very humble beginnings. And um, so I thought about that and I, I've done variations on this uh, theme over the years. Um, today, uh, I'm going to talk about a couple things and I was trying to find a, a thread that connects them all. Um, and I have found that when I look back, the thing that uh, got us to where we are today is um, it, it's often many of the decisions and the things we've done that go against the grain, right? Those are the things that have, have uh, helped our success over, over a long time. So, so uh, I'm Mike, I'm from FreshBooks. We are uh, uh, accounting software in the cloud designed for self-employed professionals and their teams. Um, basically, what makes us different is uh, we are specifically focused on, you know, no retail, no restaurant, no manufacturing, just people get paid for their time and expertise. And if you, uh, if you invoice, you need fresh books is the way I like to think about it. Um, we're number two in uh, North America after Intuit, a uh, little known fact. Um, and uh, we just launched a, a, a new platform last fall. Uh, hopefully you get a chance to speak with many of you all if you haven't already uh, about uh, working together to build your business and, and uh, 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 work on the FreshBooks platform going forward. So with all that said, um, Sneer guided me towards a couple things that uh, you all might find interesting. And so go to market and one of, is one of them in marketing. And so uh, we're here today at FreshBooks, I think, because we did some interesting things in marketing. And when I look back, um, there's some things that I can't, I can't escape. You know, I, I can't get away from, and some of them are kind of high level, but if nothing else, I hope this provides a, a little inspiration for you. So, um, first part of this talk I want to talk about is, is marketing to SMBs and why that's a terrible idea. All right. Um, there are three markets, consumer, enterprise, SMB. And, um, you know, many folks in like the venture community and what have you want nothing to do with SMB because uh, it's hard to build businesses in this market, small wallets, people churn, all that kind of thing. Um, I think perhaps, I mean, go to market is, is, is probably hardest in, in SMB than, than any other market. And it's because people, I think, fundamentally don't understand what you need to do all that well. And so, Here's how I think about it uh, upon reflection and some of the lessons we've learned, some of the missteps we've made, um, you know, in hopes uh, they help you. Uh, so uh, the first thing I would, I would have somebody think about is, is uh, it's pretty basic, right? But never goes out of style, which is knowing your customer, right? You have to... You have to really understand your customer in SMB, and I would say to a level of granularity that may not be as necessary as some, some other markets, and I'll give that a little more color in a second. Um, but, but why is that? So more so than consumer markets or enterprise markets, um, SMB is, is not one market. It is a collection of hundreds of niches and verticals and I don't think that's well understood. Like in enterprise, you're going to say, hey, I can do enterprise. Maybe there's like 10 industries you're going to break down after and find someone inside of there. In SMB, there's, you know, dog walkers to, you know, dentists to, I don't know, restaurants. And it, like it goes on and on and on and on and on. And I, I think um, when you are starting out and you're trying to reach people in this market or build a product for them, um, it's very hard to pick a target that's specific enough. Okay? And that's the first thing that kind of goes against the grain. 
And the reason that is is because you probably want to build a big business. Okay? And as you start kind of carving up that market and getting narrower and narrower and narrower, you feel like, well, I'm, I'm letting go. I'm, I'm focusing in on a market where there's maybe 100,000 of these people in, in North America. Right? It doesn't feel like a big market. Why, why would I do that if I really, really get down to it? Okay? And so it's like, oh, I don't want to do that. It sounds like a small business. I've got to think something bigger. Um, but I would suggest to you, like, that's probably the most important thing you need to do starting at serving this market. You've got to find that really narrow wedge. A couple of reasons. If you're early in building your product and you go to market, I think about it like this, is you need to move beyond averages in terms of the understanding of your customer. You need to get so specific that when you think about articulating your value prop or what features you need, it, it, you, can't, you can't mess it up because you're so specific and you're talking to such a focused group of people. So I think about, let's pick a segment like IT professionals. Hey, we serve IT professionals, right? That's actually a, a big segment. But you know what? If you get underneath there, there's a whole bunch of sub-segments in there. There's folks who work you know, inside companies. There's folks who go door to door and help people. Then there's contractors who go on you know, periodic, episodic things. So really understanding within those segments, which group you're serving and why, and then just picking one of those. And it's hard. Again, it goes against the grain to pick one of those. But I really, really believe you need to do it. And then once you pick that like smaller than you expect market, right, you got to mine it. And you got to stick with that market longer than you think. And so I had, uh, how should we do this? So, so I'll share a fun fact with you, OK? Fun fact. Uh, we're over a decade in at, at FreshBooks, uh, but quite literally, for most of the first decade of the business, we focused on one segment, one small little niche, which is web designers. Okay? That's it. I'm here today because we focused on web designers for almost a decade. And we put all our efforts into trying to go find and serve those folks. Now, the outside world wouldn't necessarily understand that super well, but that was like, that was it. And by the way, there's not ultimately all that many people that do this, and it's pretty specific. And so we stayed there. And, and, and why, why did we do that? Um, well, first of all, you're supposed to pick a niche and all these other things. But I had the good fortune to run into a guy who had some marketing background but never worked in tech and didn't understand it. And he shared this nugget with me. He was like, hey, you got to pick a niche. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I read Crossing the Chasm, got to pick a niche. But he said something else which was really interesting. He said, OK, and so when you start hitting the limit, right, and you feel like you're slowing down, you've tapped out that vertical, that's the time when you actually have to double down. You've got to stick with it longer. And there's probably like a 4 or 5 or a 10x that happens after that. And I think there's another thing that goes against the grain, right? Like you're struggling. You feel like it's not going at the speed you want it to or whatever it is. And so it's time for a change. We'll talk more about that. But sticking with it. I believe is actually the path. And so that's what we did. All right. Thing number two around marketing, I would uh, have you think about, is becoming distinct. And so everybody talks about differentiation. You know, you got to differentiate yourself from everybody else. And so, great. OK, I just want to take this further, go a little more philosophical, and talk about some of the ways we have thought about and, and done that. Um, becoming distinct to me is a step beyond being differentiated. So again, in a world where you're serving SMB, lots of people are serving SMB. Uh, and so your target customer and segment is either could maybe use some more generic and broad uh, service, or they're cobbling together a, a bunch of tools. And so you have to really, really work hard at, at in their minds, you know, being different than whatever those choices are. And I think the manifestation of this distinguishment to me, and this again goes back to the nature of SMB and what really matters, is it, it's not your value prop and the things you do, that's part of it, but it's actually the way you find out you're doing this is through word of mouth, okay? Because that's what drives adoption in this market and sales is frankly, uh, it's really hard to reach people with sales, really hard to, it, it's once you get that word of mouth engine going. And to do that, and to distinguish yourself, I believe you as a company need to perform acts, various acts which are interesting, and go beyond what you know, a bank is going to do when you try and reach this market, and go beyond you know, what maybe another company who's kind of serving them is going to do. Your company needs to perform acts. You need to actually be interesting. You need to do things 
that people will talk about and remark on. And, and, and by virtue of having to do all those things, you have to, like, the alarm clock's on here. Because when you start thinking about that like, really deeply and taking that to heart, like how are we going to get people kind of talking about us and understanding what we do, you're going to be up like we were for years and years, and I put Sneer in this boat and myself in this boat, getting this company off the ground, in the middle of the night thinking about how do we distinguish ourselves? Because every time you do something as a company actually is an opportunity if you put your like, this needs to be different and remarkable cap on, every single thing you can execute can, can be materially different. So I'm going to give you two examples uh, from things that we did where you know, we didn't have to do things in this way, but because we were so determined to distinguish ourselves, um, uh, you know, we did things a little different and it paid off for us. Okay? And so again, uh, these are more you know, examples for the sake of inspiration. So here's a screenshot from the year 2006. Okay? And so, hey, we were pretty early into building web apps. You have a sign-up form. This is like our one-time sign-up form. So you're, you're, you're starting to, like, you've come to a website, you're signing up for the, the company. And um, you know, if you were building stuff back then, you may recognize uh, some of the HTML styling and things like that. And I credit the folks at uh, 37 Signals with using legends and blah, blah, blah. But uh, we did something a little different. So I said to myself, hey, everybody needs to sign up for this product to use it. Other people are signing up for all kinds of products all the time. Like, what can we do that's a little bit different? And what we did is, you can't see it on this because it's actually a PDF and not PowerPoint, and maybe that's my bad, but uh, what happens is that little yellow box, that little yellow box just flies in. We used some new CSS to make that little yellow box fly in. And what it would talk about is like why you're filling out this thing, what's the value in it for people. All right, seems like a small thing. But you know, it took a deliberate effort to do something differently to come up with that slightly differentiated UX. What happened, which we couldn't have anticipated, was somebody signed up, this guy from the Usability Institute, became, he was like, hey, this is different. Ended up writing like an 8,000 page, or sorry, 8,000 page, 8,000 word like review of our UX at the time. And uh, turned out he posted online, pointed at a very targeted audience of, of designers and things. And, um, uh, and so that brought people to us. And all of a sudden, the guys from the office at uh, 37 Signals pointed a link to that thing because it was a good write-up. You know, it wasn't so much about us. It's like a good write-up on, on modern UX and kind of who's leading. And so we started to drive more awareness within our, our target segment by virtue of the simple act of trying to deliberately find a way to do something mundane that everybody has. It's, it's just a web form, everybody. You've got to sign up and go through it. But taking the time to think about, like, how do we do it differently? Example number two is this. Same sort of mindset. So uh, this is a photo of a bunch of people in a bus. And uh, it's in Austin, Texas. So because we serve web designers, uh, we would go to conferences. And uh, one of the big meetings of folks was South by Southwest in Austin every year. There's a music festival and an interactive festival. And we started going when there was very few people. And it grew really fast. And there were thousands. And so we would spend the year between attending these events thinking about how do we, how do we win at that conference? How do, we, how, do we, how do we have it such that people are walking away knowing about us and what we stand for? And so we kind of created these constraints. OK, we're going to deliberately think about how do we do that, spend hours on it, throw out a million ideas. And um, we ended up uh, having two goals. We said, we want to basically meet people before they go to the show so they know us. And we want to make sure they come away knowing that we are all about service, which we are. I don't know if you know about FreshBooks, but like award-winning service-oriented company, uh, customer service and UX. Anyhow, and so what we decided to do was rent two Greyhound shuttles. Okay? And we offered free shuttling from the airport in Austin, which is about 25 minutes away from downtown down down to the conference. Okay? Now, why did we do this and why did this fit for us strategically and achieve our objectives? Well, everyone, before they even got to the conference, they met us, right? Because we were standing in baggage claim being like, hey, would you like a free ride to the show? When they get on the bus, we have a captive audience to tell them about what we do and why we matter. And literally, we're living a demonstration of service, which is what we're about. Right? So this thing hung together really nicely. We had 
like we basically stunted the uh, the airport and put like magnets up on the walls people could rip down and stuff like that and so so it was kind of a whole experience but what was really cool is you walk around the show with thousands of people for the next few days and people are like hey good to see you again right and people are like oh who's that oh that's you know Sunir who is who is uh, who shuttled us in from the from the airport um, the point is we put a lot of time and effort into thinking about how to distinguish ourselves and start that kind of like offline word of mouth conversation. Like this isn't just about your value prop being different in a banner. It's about acts in the world that people will then go talk about. And then by the way, you can bring out to a conference and tell other people that. And because this is a story, you're going to remember it and you're going to pass it on. And by the way, other people like this idea so much, they stole it and repeated it in other places, right? So we'll take credit for that because it was ours. But uh, that to me is uh, a sign of uh, success. All right, so, all right, so know your customer. Spend time thinking about being distinct because you've got to drive that, that word of mouth engine. The final thing, and I think this is poorly understood when you're reaching the SMB market, don't change. Okay, we'll talk about this. Actually, I just had a conversation with someone who's thinking about, well, maybe we need to change. So bear with me. Let me explain this. This market is so diffuse and so hard to reach it's so important to get your message to people and, uh, and to stay consistent about it. And when you think about the nature of the market, how diffuse it is, and how hard people are to reach, consistency is really key. But feedback is really hard to come by. So you're putting things out into the world, and maybe sales aren't going quite the clip you want them to yet. Right? You, you can't see the feedback that is actually maybe going on in the market that you're not aware of. And so when you see the companies who break out serving this market, I'm going to use a MailChimp uh, chimp and Infusionsoft. Uh, I'll put FreshBooks in there. I was talking to the guys at Zapier, which seems like now is really you know, six and a half years in or whatever it is, really starting to lift. They gutted it out, kind of stay and put, same kind of message. And so when I think about marketing to SMBs, and that l slow feedback loop and the necessity of staying focused on it. I think of, here, here's my analogy. I don't know if you, any of you all uh, like canoe trips, but uh, I've never worked anywhere but FreshBooks, aside from being a, uh, like basically like a, a camp counselor and canoe trip guide. My, my last couple of years, I was leading a 36-day uh, canoe trip and a 44-day canoe trip. Okay, so it's the summer, taking 15, 16-year-olds out. What's great is you're outside, right? You're on the move every day. We'd move like 30, you know, 40 kilometers. And, and um, you come to these campsites. And sometimes you come and there'd be uh, these burn marks on the bottom of all the trees, about two, three feet up. Uh, you may not be familiar with this concept, uh, but if you're ever out in, like, staying on a campsite and there's a designated fire spot, you should really use it. Uh, because if you don't and you build a fire, like, on the ground, what can happen is the fire goes down in the root system of the trees. Okay, so you're not on a proper fire spot that's like rock. The fire goes down into the root system of the trees. And you go to bed, and there's no fire. And you leave the campsite, and there's no fire. And three days later, there's like 50 or 100 trees on fire and a massive underground root fire going on that nobody could see. And by the time it actually sprouts up, it's a bad scene. Like things are like burning down, okay? And it's hard to put out and all these things. And that, to me, is what success looks like in SMB marketing. But you've you got to wait, right? You've got to stick with it. You've got to stay consistent, right? So uh, where I think you know, we maybe uh, haven't done so well ourselves on this one, um, FreshBooks is all about service. Okay, it has been for a long time. I'm, I'm pleased to, I don't know if any of you use the tool Nice Reply. They got 10,000 customers. We, uh, we had the most replies from our customers last year and the highest rating. Right? That's data that says like we're number one in service from a, a third party. And then uh, we also won a Stevie Award, which is something we've, uh, uh, well, we actually, technically, we, we won a whole bunch. We stopped going. We became a judge. Then we stopped doing that. Decided to go back in this year, applied for the hardest category, frontline service. We got silver. Okay, So hopefully we'll get back to winning gold. But the point is like we're world class at this thing. And in our earliest days, we used to always talk about service. When we talk with the media, we talk about our website, like we really drove that thing home. So I'm pleased to report 
that we're still doing the service, I think that's the most important thing. But what I feel like is we've gotten away with our marketing, you know, through changes of uh, you know leadership or whatever it is for making that core to to our message. And so I don't know if there's as many people today that know how great we are at this as there should be because we kind of started shifting like, hey, how do we present ourselves? And so for me, that's a lost opportunity because we weren't consistent with what we're about and part of our story. Okay, uh, and so don't make that mistake. Find your thing and stick with it past the point where you think you should. And so for me, this is not a startup thing only, like trying to figure it out and stick with it. I think it's also as you scale, you can drift and it happens gradually and you get away from what that original value prop was, right? Or, you know, you just want to change and do something else because you're entrepreneurial and you think it's time and you can't get that feedback. So uh, you probably feel like changing your go to market. You probably feel like changing your target market. You probably feel like changing your product. I would suggest to you like, the majority of the time, probably 80% of the time, that's a bad idea. People love this whole notion of making a pivot. Fuck it. Stay put. Stay put. Keep going because chances are that go to market is not broken. You just haven't got to the other side of it yet. You gotta, that's, the, that's the point where you kind of got to push through and hang in there a little longer. All right. So thinking about marketing, know your customer. Make concerted effort to distinguish yourself because ultimately you're fighting for awareness and oxygen, right? And you want to get that word of mouth going and then stick with it, okay? Beyond like points of reason, right? Stick with it. Okay, so that's the marketing talk. I'm gonna shift gears because this is my opportunity to talk about looking back 10 years and some of the things. So what, what's the next thing where we kind of went against the grain? Um, I come from Toronto, Toronto, Canada. This is uh, uh, Toronto, uh, fun fact, now the third largest city in North America. So LA, New York, Toronto. We're bigger than Chicago. If you include Mexico and North America, we're fourth. Okay, fine. Uh, Mexico City is pretty big. Uh, but uh, here we are, we're third in the uh, US and Canada. And in um, uh, you know, a big city, but interestingly, um, Huge financial services industry. Uh, we may remember from the downturn, Canadian banks came out in a very strong place. Um, oil and gas, like lumber, resources, like that's the economy. In Toronto, that's where the things focus. And there was almost no tech community there when I started. Okay, nothing. And uh, the first meetup, I went to a meetup in like, I think it was like 2003, in a, it was like a thing called Demo Camp, and people were showing off their, their technologies. And uh, we presented, we were like one of the seven people there, and we we're talking about web funnels. I was explaining, hey folks, like this is how a sales funnel works. Like people had no clue, you know, they were playing with toys, like it just wasn't well organized and developed. And, and over the last decade, uh, the community's come along. But, but back then, what was really troubling to me was the mindset of people, right? So not only was there no community, not only were they not developed, they had the wrong mindset. Uh, and what I mean by that is you had a venture community who were behaving like big fish in small ponds and just doing brutal things to entrepreneurs, like terrible terms, terrible deers, like just awful. And the internet wasn't there. They were using the information arbitrage of being a VC in a cottage industry and entrepreneurs just being completely disadvantaged on, on how stuff works. So, so bad there, and they were thinking small, not about growing uh, larger businesses, and they got crappy outcomes as a result. <clears throat> but worse still, to me, was the mindset of the entrepreneurs. Okay, so you run a decade in Toronto, and success for anyone who was building a company was to leave our hometown and come down to the valley. Like that's what was success. We move our whole company, we leave. All right, and so again, bringing the thread together and looking back at ten years, things we've learned. Um, I guess I'm the kind of person who, if everybody's running one way, I want to go the other. Uh, just, just cause. Like, and maybe it's hard, and that's a challenge. It's like I don't care that that like. If everyone's going that way, I'm going the other way. And so we said, like, what the hell? Why don't, why don't we just make this a core thing that we're going to try and do this year? People say it can't be done, so, so let's do it. And so uh, that actually became part of our, our mission. Uh, the mission of FreshBooks is to reshape the world to suit the needs of self-employed professionals and their teams. Okay? That is our core mission. But we believe if we succeed on that mission and help these people through a variety of ca uh, categories and with your help doing it, um, we will, you know, we'll sort of 
be able to build what we call a global technology company headquartered in Toronto, which to me is about 1,000 employees. You're not really there until you, you get there. Okay? So that's, that's what we're working towards. And um, you know, that sort of came up organically. And what was interesting to me is just a lesson as a leader and a person is like once we kind of stake that claim, people started opting in. You know, that became a reason that people wanted to stay. I want to be a part of building this thing from my hometown and leaving something behind. Uh, reason people wanted to join, reason people wanted to stay. And, and, and uh, that was just interesting to me. And so I guess this is more uh, a talk for folks who are maybe building in smaller markets. You know, you've come from out of town to be here. And the notion that, and maybe this is like past the point because you all have raging tech communities in your area, but, you know, probably many of you do, do not. And there's an opportunity, I, I think, to leave something behind. And that's something that, for me, gives more meaning to what we do every day. And I, I find fresh bookers feel the same way. So um, yeah, and, and what's been cool to see, I should add, is, is there is a, a growing community now. Like, that, that event was seven people. Now there's a monthly meetup of 600 people. Uh, there's some cool companies like Wattpad, if you don't know them, some consumer tech, lots of enterprise tech that's developing and saying, hey, we can build there now. Uh, unfortunately, you get things like the Valley, like the market is getting expensive for talent and all that good stuff. So, uh, but, but it's exciting to see how far this has come. And I honestly believe that uh, we had a hand in giving people the faith that they could do it. Okay, so if you're in your own town and people aren't thinking about building there, just know this. It just takes one to believe and others will follow. Right? So think about that. All right, and so uh, my third seemingly unconnected uh, section here for this talk, third and final, uh, is, the, is the following. Um, uh, as you know, our, um, the markets that we serve, people going into small business are themselves going against the grain. In many ways, it's easier to get a job, not take on the stresses and the hassles. Okay? Uh, today uh, at FreshBooks, we're actually launching the largest and most comprehensive study of self-employed professionals who earn the majority of their income uh, uh, from uh, self-employment that, as far as we understand, has ever been released. And so it's a panel of our customers and other people who are not customers who earn the majority of their income from self-employment. Uh, it's quite fulsome, uh, a lot of data exposed. Uh, the intent here, again, we're living that mission of we're here to reshape the world to suit the needs of self-employed professionals and their teams. I have this belief that this market is not well understood, okay? And we collectively have an opportunity to educate others about this market and the needs of our customers uh, so that we hopefully help other people come and decide to serve them and serve them better, all right? So that's the intent behind us, you know, the choice to do the study. And uh, we're putting it out today. And what I want to share with you just very briefly are some things that I, I saw and learned and leave you with a bit of a call to action. Um, so we cover a, a number of things. Just like off the top, I'll, I'll share with you People love working for themselves, right? I, I think you know this, and they don't want to go back. Those who've left, like, nobody's going back, right? So, so that's interesting, all right? Um, they love the flexibility that they get. Like, it's, it's a trend. Once you go, you, you kind of don't go back. So, so there's lots of good stuff there. We do motivations. We do, like, hey, like, where you spend your time, how you find your customers. Like, probably every business here would do well to grab a copy of the thing and just get access to some free data and research on the market. Having said that, I pull out uh, three nuggets, which I think are interesting. We put them together. So unsurprisingly, this is a group of people that say, we're pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps. We have no confidence in our, gov our government to get anything done right. So just stay the hell out of our way. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, uh, if you're an American self-employed person, like you're just like, just <clears throat> I'm not looking for help from the government. First, please do no harm, just, just get out of the way. Lower taxes, less I see you, the better. Okay, so not hugely surprising. Something that surprised me, because uh, I feel like when I pick up the phone, lots of the customers we're talking about are, are you know, often like millennials and getting started out. And anyways, the, the panel for this ended up median age of 50. Okay, older than I thought. And when you do research, you know, about entrepreneurs and what have you, as much as we read the headlines of, you know, 22 year old kid and Mark Zuckerberg and whatever, it's actually usually folks who are self-employed are actually a little further in their careers and have some discipline they've developed that they can sell back. So maybe not hugely surprising, but median age of the study was 50. And 42% um, of people, like almost half, are not saving for retirement yet. 
Okay? Now, I don't know about you folks, but uh, you know, this market is the largest and fastest growing segment of the workforce right now. There's like, depending on the research you look at, 40 to 60 million people are self-employed in America today, right? And these folks aren't saving for retirement. And they're, they're kind of flying without a net in the sense that, you know, 51% would be at risk if a large invoice didn't get paid. You know, they're, they're not prepared if they get uh, sued. And, um, uh, or, or disabled because they don't have insurance and the things that you would expect to have from a, an employer. And so why am I sharing these with you? The, the, the study is actually more hopeful than the things I'm sharing. But I think if I step back and think from a macro perspective, you put those three things together and um, you know, it's a pretty dark future for, I would say, like is a massive segment of you know, the American economy. Uh, and as you play it forward, people are gonna be extending retirement and or ending up in a place that is just fundamentally not good and not having saved, okay? So, so this gets to my call to action, all grim and, 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 and dark. Is I think you know, part of the solution, it's not the government, I think it's us. You know? How do we help these folks through education, through you know, building products and services that really help elevate them and get them on top of their game so they can succeed today, but also be prepared tomorrow and so my question is hey who's there to help them and I, I think I think everyone here would agree that uh, I think we all have a role to play in that That's the small business web so so that's a little bit of marketing to SMBs it's a little bit of the fun of building from the hometown uh, the studies out there please it's just on our blog and go get it uh, for free it's, it's long it's, a, it's actually a good read very proud of the work done there actually we used our customers to do the research to the graphic design and uh, the PR firm that we use is also a customer of ours as well. So pretty cool, fun fact. Uh, we try to source uh, things from our, from our customer base. So, uh, so um, but go check it out and uh, I'll leave that with you. And then final thing, just because we're here, uh, myself and, and two others from FreshBooks are here and we'd, we'd love to speak with, uh, uh, with you all about uh, working together. So please, uh, please come and say hello.